And today's adventure starts off with the little Minnesota Golden Gophers rugby. It's the women's team and it looks like they've already in a little pile up over there. <laughs> it's a little chilly out here, so we're not we're not going to be spending too long. This is not our actual adventure. But I thought, "Oh my gosh, somebody just got slammed to the ground." <laughs> Fun way to start the morning. And today's adventure brings us to Falcon Heights, Minnesota. And that building right there behind me, that's the Bell Museum Planetarium. And the planetarium part, I get, it's a planetarium. But the museum part is a little puzzling. It says, from what I could read, that they have animal dioramas in there. And I'm not sure exactly what that means, but we are going to find out. So welcome to another edition of Tommy Travels. It's Tommy Travels. That is a fairly big building, so I think there's going to be a lot to check out. So come on with me. Let's go see what there is to see. looking at here is their wildlife corridor and you can watch their native landscape grow and also the aquatic garden which is this pond right here here's a little look at the inside of the building and today's adventure is going to start at the planetarium you can tell the space theme hallway there should be pretty interesting. I don't know how much I'll be able to film, but after that, then we're going to check out the rest of the museum. Well, I haven't been to a planetarium since I was in about fifth or sixth grade. And here it is, the big ceiling. You're going to see a lot of planets and stars and all sorts of things. Should be a lot to learn. So the show you signed up for today is Minnesota in the Cosmos. And this follows the journey of a little boy named Jacob as he goes on a field trip to Taylor's Falls and then things go a little crazy. And um, he goes a little extra galactic. And then you'll learn about um, how Minnesota came to be and the Earth and all the stuff we went through. Um, so yeah, after the video, we're going to have some time for questions and let the credits roll. And then we'll go into talking about the sky tonight. So I'll come back down here and I'll point out some of the constellations that you can find in your own backyard and cool stuff like that. All right. So I will see you guys after about the 25 minute video. And we'll let it play and I hope you enjoy. <laughs> Rex, uh, Miss Science, Miss Science, 
So that was a very cool and fascinating planetarium show that we got to check out. It was really awesome to see the different constellations and planets. And she did a great job of answering the kids' smart questions that they had. And if you haven't been to a planetarium show in a while, this one here at the Bell Museum is a great one to check out. Here's a look at the inside of the Bell Museum. As you can see right here, that is the planetarium that we were just inside of. And then there are two floors of exhibits to check out. And so, let's see what they have in store. And of course, with every museum, it's good to have an area where you can actually touch and see exhibits and do some learning. And this is a pretty big room, so it should be interesting to see what they have in here. All right, hello, welcome to Tommy Travels, and your name? My name is Sharon Jansen. Oh, yes, hello, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So we've got some mammals here that are involved in food production, and these may or may not be things that you want to eat. <laughs> so we've got bats here. Oh, wow. These bats are both nectar-eating bats. Mm -hmm. You can see how long their snouts are, how tiny their teeth. Oh my gosh. And these bats are actually involved in making tequila. Oh! <laughs> so this is the bat that pollinates the agave plant that is eventually used to make tequila. Oh my gosh. So people get all creeped out over bats, but if they didn't have them, they wouldn't have tequila. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you so much. And we've got a butterfly collection here is always cool different species and I think my favorite one is these purple guys right here <laughs> go Vikings oh okay and what is your name uh, Magnus Magnus nice to meet you I've got a friend named Magnus <laughs> cool. nice to meet you too cool what do we have here so this is our eastern hognose um, she's about 15 years old, and we just got her, um, we rescued her from an abandoned apartment building wow. in downtown Minneapolis. Wow. Yeah, so we've had her for a little under a year, but... How do you know that it's 15 years old? Um, so snakes grow their whole lives, mm -hmm. so just knowing the breed and how long she is, they made an estimate of about 15. Oh my gosh, and now... Do those, are those poisonous at all? Not, probably not. No, not no. venomous. Okay, that is really cool. But and native to Minnesota, so you might find them around the southwest region, around the prairies and that sort of area. That is awesome. Can I pet it? Sure. Can yeah. I touch it? I just wanna. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. And then how often do they shed? Um, it depends on stress and a lot of a lot of different things, but usually I think around three or four times a year. Oh, three, wow, okay. Something like that. Well, he is a cute little guy, and I think he's much happier in his new home here yeah. at the Bell Museum than <laughs> out in an abandoned building in Minneapolis, that's yeah. for sure. I hope so. Awesome. Thank you so much for your help today, Magnus. Thanks for coming in. Okay. And I guess this is what they mean by dioramas. All set up with different animals that you can find. Like the baby western grebe on parent's back. Dragonfly. And they've got all sorts of fish under the water. All right, so what is your name? I'm Darcy. Darcy, nice to meet you. And what do we have here? This is our female ornate box turtle. Ornate box turtle. Oh, look at that. 
I think her tail is the cutest little part. Oh, cute. <laughs> How does it, what's the difference between that and a normal box turtle? Um, so we've got a normal box turtle here. Um, so she's just got all these pretty designs on her shell. Oh, okay. Well, that is really cool. Darcy, thank you so much. This is kind of a cool room here where kids can examine the inside of fruits and vegetables like this and dip them in paint and create cool masterpiece works of art just like this. <laughs> Look at that, we even have a smiley face. That is awesome. Well done, kid artists. Well done. And here we have some tundra swans that are traveling from their winter homes on the Atlantic coast to summer breeding grounds in the Arctic. And they use their long necks to grab some lunch from the bottom of the pond. These are, these are really, really cool dioramas they have in here. So hello, what is your name? My name is Adam. Adam, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. What do you have here? This is a crested gecko. Oh, so he's a different color than the gecko from the gecko commercial. He is a little more gray, isn't he? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh look, he just climbs right up your arm. And where do you find these guys? These guys live in New Caledonia. Okay. What happened to his tail there? So he used to be in uh, an, an exhibit with the female. Yeah. Um, and he would eat all her food, so she bit his tail off. Oh my goodness. Well. <laughs> so is that going to grow back then? Or? Nope, his doesn't grow back. Oh no. He's marked for life. Wow. I guess he's not going to steal food or... <laughs> no, he's learned his lesson, I would hope. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Absolutely. And these birds that we are looking at here are called kites. And they fly with exquisite grace and speed. And they swoop to pluck snakes from the ground and catch insects in the air. <laughs> they were once very common along the Mississippi River as far north as Itasca State Park, but are now really only found in southern Florida and Central and South America. <laughs> Feels like we're right up in the air, flying right there with them. It's kind of weird how previous adventures keep popping up in new adventures. Because what we are looking at here is the shores of Lake Pepin. This is the Minnesota side that we're looking at. But on a previous adventure, we went to the Wisconsin side and visited the birth home of Laura Ingalls Wilder. And then we went on a cruise on this very lake on the Minnesota side in Lake City, Minnesota. So it's kind of good to see that again. And this is a diorama of shorebirds that once stopped for lunch on these very shores. Oh, so. Here on this table, we have some really interesting things. First, I will turn your attention to this. Yes. Uh, now this, I just discovered what this was yesterday, yeah. uh, thanks to a National Geographic book. So this is actually quartz mm -hmm. turned blue by this iron strip that you see right here. Okay. Um, and then right here, so this is a giant fossilized shell. It's really heavy, I can't oh, even you don't pick have it up. To. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. And um, it is something called amorite. Amorite. Yes, so that was an ancient shell of an animal. Now, there are a few replicas in this room. Mm -hmm. uh, and let's see, most people point out the re replicas because they're the coolest things in here. So this one is a very common replica. This is the saber tooth tiger, um, as you can tell by the very infamous long canine teeth. Yeah. Um, and then also people uh, love to ask about this skull. Now this skull right here is called a short-faced bear. Uh, here's a diagram that shows uh, the kind of the difference oh, okay. between a polar. So our polar bear is this right here, and the grizzly bear is right here. 
and the short-faced bear was even bigger than that. Now, they lived in California, and they went extinct about 10,000 years ago. Is that a real skull, or is that a replica? That one is also a replica. Okay. And then, last but not least, that people like to talk about here on this table is this. So, this is called a desert gypsy rose. Okay. Um, most people think it is coral, but it's not. It is a rock formation. of. Uh, it is made by compressed sand. You can find these in desert areas, including in Arizona. Wow. Yeah. And it kind of does look like like a rose, like yeah. little roses in there. That is right. <laughs> so yeah, so that's what I, that's what I got. <laughs> that is awesome. And what is your name? Uh, Corey. Corey, nice to meet you. Welcome to Tommy Travels. Thanks for helping out. Of course, <laughs> of course. Yes, my pleasure. I've come across a little art exhibit here in a hallway. It's called Impact. This is a Canadian warbler from 2014. And it's hard to tell why it's called Impact until you look at this guy right here. <laughs> look at that, it looks like it just crashed right into a little wall there. <laughs> Beautiful bird. Very creative. Get ready for the meeting dance round. You're being recorded. Remember all the moves you learned. Start dancing. Bow. Jump. <laughs> Got an interactive game here for kids to learn how to do a mating dance of the Sandhill Crane. Very cute. Great job. You got your partner's attention. <laughs> he won. There you are, here. Well done. And now we're in northern Minnesota looking at some beavers eating their aspen bark and repairing their dams and lodges. Look at that. Just going away on that tree right there. Busy as, well, beavers, I guess. <laughs> And here we have a moose, the largest member of the deer family. These guys can eat 20 to 60 pounds of plants per day to stay healthy. Except maybe during mating season, which it is mating season for this guy right now. And they can go weeks at a time without eating food during mating season and lose up to 100 pounds. That is quite a diet plan. And here are some wolves that are roaming the north shore of Lake Superior. These guys once fed on caribou, but then once the forests were cut down, they were displaced by white-tailed deer. And it looks like they are looking for one right now. Well, when I woke up this morning, I didn't think I would be looking at a muskox or a giant beaver with a huge tail and I didn't think I'd be looking at a woolly mammoth either. <laughs> that was the furthest thing from my mind but there it is. A real live or actually stuffed woolly mammoth but that's okay. These guys used to roam around in Minnesota during the Ice Age. And then, as the weather warmed, a lot of these animals either went extinct or moved north. And the woolly mammoth was a combination of the warmer weather and overhunting. Good to see you, guy. Welcome to Tommy Travels. And <laughs> check this out. Just when you think you've seen everything, here are some square watermelons. In Japan, some watermelons grow in perfect cubes. Wasn't produced by selective breeding. Instead, farmers grow melons in clear boxes that control their final shape. But the seeds of these melons would still produce round melons like we are all used to today. Hi there, and what is your name? I'm Carly. Carly, welcome to Tommy Travels. And what do we have here? This is a Chilean tarantula. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I've never been this up close in person with the tarantula. Wow. 
So it's from Chile then? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Central and South America is where these guys live. Okay. Can I touch it? Yeah, if you want to do one finger really lightly on the abdomen back here, this part. This part right here? Yep. Oh, this, sorry, this oh, back part. Sorry. That's okay. No, you're good. Just want to... Yep. There oh, you go. yeah. Fuzzy. Yeah, she's very... <laughs> Harry. <laughs> kind of like a little dog. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. Well, thank you guys very much again for hanging out with me here today. It's been an absolute blast. And if you've never been to the Bell Museum before, you definitely have to check it out. There is something cool around every corner. And if you liked what you saw here today, go ahead and hit like on my YouTube channel. Much appreciate that. And then go ahead and hit subscribe and the bell notification next to it. It just gives you future updates of videos that are yet to come. And we're also looking to grow the family here a little bit, so feel free to hit share as well. Definitely do appreciate that. And this is just mesmerizing to look at. And there is the famous water feature that we end just about every time he travels episode in. Very beautiful and mesmerizing. Well, you guys, thanks again for hanging out with me today and it's been an absolute blast. I hope to catch you on the flip side. And before we go, there's a little sculpture garden here with a wolf <laughs> coming nose to nose with the moose. I don't know how that's going to wind up, but I hope this wolf brought some friends along because this guy does not look happy. Oh, here's a guy coming to his rescue. Coming in to help his buddy out. Good luck, fellas. <laughs> I'm not going to stick around for this one.